How's it going guys? Thanks so much for checking out another toy photography tutorial. Uh, in this one, we're going to be focusing on setting up your scene. How to set up a scene with toy photography. And when I mean setting up a scene, I mean framing your shot, setting up your figures, getting them in the right place with the light, and just getting everything in the right place for you to take the actual shot. And I'm kind of going to just start out with, right from step one, I'm going to start out with posing, and what's in my head before I get started setting things up and then bringing my figures outside and setting them up and then taking the shot. And I'm gonna try and break it down as much as possible and share as much as I possibly can with what decisions I'm making every step of the way while I'm setting up my shot. So I'm really hoping this video is gonna be really helpful for anybody who's just trying to step up their toy photography game just a little bit. So I just got the brand new Bardock SH Figure Arts figure and I really love him and I haven't taken a shot with him yet so I'm definitely gonna be doing him in today's shot and I kind of have this vision in my head of him like, him like holding up Frieza by the neck in an alternate timeline where Bardock's able to defeat Frieza before he just even destroys Planet Vegeta or whatever. And so in my head I kind of have Bardock holding Frieza up in the air. There's like rocks floating around. The sunlight is right behind them. This is really, really cool, dynamic looking photo. And hopefully I can do what's in my head. So the first step is I'm actually going to pose the figures the way I want them inside before I bring them outside. That's how I usually do it. And keep in mind, no photo is ever gonna be the same. Uh, I know mine are definitely not. So most of the time my process is somewhat the same. <laughs> Certainly not always. Different ways work better for different people, but this is kind of the way that has worked best for me when it comes to taking a vision I have in my brain and illustrating it with the toys in the photo. So I've pretty much got these guys in the right poses I want them to be. Bardock's gonna be holding them kind of like this a little bit. Most likely it will change when I get out there and actually set up the shot, but for the most part I have down the poses that I want for them, and it looks pretty good. And I like actually posing them inside first before I go out there and, and start shooting because I'm kind of more relaxed here. I can take my time and get them in the exact poses that I want them to be in, and posing is such a huge and important part of your photo, so it's really worth taking the extra time to do that. And I do have a full video on just posing your figures if you're interested in really stepping up your game with that. Uh, it's in my tutorial playlist. I'll have it linked over here if you guys want to see it. But I think these guys are ready, so I'm going to go um, outside and set up the shot. Alright, so it's towards the end of the afternoon. It's about 5 o'clock p.m. or so. And this time of year, it usually, the sun usually starts to set right around this time, which is my favorite type of lighting. Everything just looks so much more dramatic when the sun is about to set, and it can really help your shot out quite a bit. And right here is one of my favorite spots. Uh, it's a little mound of moss, and moss I think is really beautiful, so I always like to shoot on moss. And so I have my camera on a lower angle facing up kind of towards the sun, which gives me a good advantage to shoot the figures from a nice lower angle, which kind of makes the figures look taller, more lifelike, you know what I mean? So that's why I'm kind of starting out like this. So first I'm going to set up one figure. And having a tripod on your camera is going to make this so much easier. I mean, some people don't like to use tripods, but when you have one, you can kind of set it down exactly where you want it and then you can kind of move things accordingly after you set it down exactly where you want it and it makes things a million times easier. So I would definitely recommend tripod. Uh, all the gear that I'm using, tripod, stuff, I'm gonna have it all linked in the uh, description of the video. So the main subject of my shoot of this photo is Bardock. So I'm gonna set him up first actually before I do Frieza. I haven't even really got my camera right in the right spot that I want yet. I haven't even thought about that. I'm just going to do Bardock first. Yeah, I want to get the first subject of my photo ready. And I have a little wire right here. I'm just going to stick it right in the ground and then stick it kind of right up in Bardock's butt. And so now he's going to stand up right in place. Try to keep the subject of your photo right in the center and right where your main focus is. And then try to keep everything else 
in the photo also occupied with something. Try not to have super big empty spaces above their head or below, unless you know you're trying to be creative and that can sometimes look really cool. Also, don't have the, the make sure it's not cut off or anything too much or too, make sure they're not too close to the edge or too close. As long as your main subjects are fully in the photo, it's gonna square off and look so much nicer. It's really, really important just to make sure every single little detail and everybody is pushed in exactly where they need to be in your picture and that's really going to make a huge difference. So this is kind of a tall, a tall photo because Bardock is kind of standing upright and he's going to be raising Frieza up higher so I'm going to make this a vertical photo, not a horizontal one. So I'm going to make my camera go sideways a little bit. I'm going to look at my screen on my camera and I'm going to try to find my right positioning, the right spot that I want. And I want to kind of have the sun right behind Bardock. Okay, that looks great. I have the positioning of the camera I want, but I kind of want to move Bardock around a little bit first. So I will always place down the main subject of my photo first, before I even put my camera down in the right spot, just so I can get kind of the positioning that I want. And so far, the positioning looks pretty sweet. And so now that I have the positioning of the camera and everything there, I can actually adjust Bardock a little bit according to how I want him uh, in the photo. One little bit at a time. Kind of want to turn him a little bit. And I'm constantly looking up, looking at my, uh, constantly looking at my screen here to see exactly what I want. One other tip about using vertical photos that I've learned recently, try to make sure, especially if you're posting them on Instagram, try to make sure there's still a little bit of extra space on the top and then on the bottom of the photo, so then you can crop it. So it fits, because Instagram won't let you do a full length long photo. It has this like 4.5, 4 by 5 ratio. So I try to make sure that I'm back a little bit further so that there's a little bit of extra space so I can crop the photo and it'll still fit on Instagram without having to use those annoying bars or something. <laughs> the whole photo kind of has something going on. There's, he's right there. Um, the grass on the bottom has this really cool lighting there. And the lighting behind him like that really makes him pop. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now with the picture. So I'm going to try and set up Frieza and I might need to adjust the camera now that Freeze is going into it. But after I do that, I can kind of add everything else afterwards. So all the effects, all the other stuff, that comes second. Make sure your framing, your posing, everything else comes first. And then you can add your effects because that is definitely a secondary thing. The effects are awesome, but everything else should come first. I have another big wire right here for Frieza. I'm gonna try and, how am I gonna keep Frieza standing? gonna use just the point here to try to stick it up Freeze's butt. Actually, you know, this wire is definitely way too long. So I'm gonna stick the wire in the ground. Luckily the ground is nice and soft so I can stick it in there. And I'm gonna stick the wire right up Freeze's Budinski. Just like that. I'm hoping that Bardock will also kind of um, help support Frieza as well. Okay, so right now it's all set up, but I need to look at my camera to make sure it still looks good. And if it doesn't, I'm going to keep looking at the screen and adjusting little bits here and there to make sure everything looks perfect. So Frieza is there, but he's still a little bit out of the screen, a little bit too close to the top of my photo, so I need to kind of adjust to make sure everything's centered. I'm just gonna move the camera around. All right, uh, that actually looks pretty good. I don't even know if I need to readjust Frieza at all. But right now, Bardock is very dark. I can't really see his face. So I have brought my light projector, and um, I'm gonna, or not my light, my, my light reflector over here. So I'm gonna use that when I'm taking the photo to make sure some light is also bouncing over into Bardock's face so we can see him. These things are amazing. If you don't have one, they're very cheap on Amazon. I will have it linked in the description of the video. But as you can see, look, I'm bouncing the sun right from here onto the figures. And that's gonna change a lot. I'm not really sure if you can tell, but yeah, see how dark he goes from dark to light? 
I'm, an, I'm literally just moving around the reflector and that is changing everything. So I definitely recommend one of these. So I have my little handy dandy air blaster gun thingy, which just shoots a bunch of air, which is really great. I'm gonna use that if you want one of these. I'll have this link in the description also. So I'm gonna use that to shoot up a bunch of dirt to make it look like there's lots of power, you know, going on with this fight that's happening right here. <clears throat> All right, I'm getting a bunch of, a big pile of dirt. I'm gonna put it right here, right next to them. And I'm gonna pump this guy up, and I'm gonna go and shoot it up. I'm gonna take the shot. So I only have two hands, and I'm out here by myself, so I, don't, I need two to hold this up and to shoot this all at the same time. So I'm actually gonna use my timer on my camera. Uh, one of the best things to use is the timer and it shoots like eight bursts of shots all at the same time. It's super, super useful. So I use that all the time and I'm gonna use that. And I think that's really gonna help. So when I angle the light for this thing, I could just angle it, you know, directly and have the light smack right face in the front of them. Or I could move it over to the side here and kind of get like this really cool and creative lighting off from like the back slash side of them and it looks actually quite a bit cooler if you try to be creative with your lighting a little more like this and reflect it so that you can get it flat smack in the middle or move it off to the side a little bit so definitely always think about that when you're setting up and trying to get your light so i'm angling it instead of right in the front over off to the side a little bit you get a definitely a little bit of a difference that way with your lighting Not every photo is ever going to be the same, but with every photo you should think about every single little thing. Where you're positioning the camera, are you? do you want to come from below or from behind? Where you want to have the lighting? Do you want to have the lighting be right smack in the front of their face? Or do you want it to be a little bit cool and creative, kind of like the way the lighting is with me right now. I got kind of like light on this side and <laughs> dark on this side. You're posing. Uh, where they're positioned in the photo all of this matters and all this makes a huge difference So like I said, not every photo is going to be exactly like this one But if you think about each one of those little things in your process, it will definitely improve your photos for sure Thank you guys so much for watching this video I really hope, hope that I could even help out a little bit Hopefully this photo and all my other photos will be posted on Instagram Facebook Twitter all that stuff at Sir Dork 730 that's where I am. In 2021, I'm really trying to step up my YouTube game with posting lots of videos, lots of tutorials. So I highly recommend subscribing if you haven't yet. I appreciate you guys, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.